Maranatha. We greet everyone, the brethren of the church and those who visit us with the peace of the Lord. We're here this morning to glorify to God in a service dedicated to Him for the blessings received, for the deliverance, and especially for the life of Renata. Because we know that the Lord operated. The Lord has been present, taking care of her, and listening to the prayer, her prayer, the prayer of the family, the children, the church. And the victory, and Renata's victory is our victory. So I invite everyone to kneel down so that we can begin this service. We're going to begin with a prayer, and then we're going to sing a couple of songs and a message so that the Lord can speak to our hearts. Lord Father, we plead for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. With our bended knee in your presence, we ask that you, this morning, may forgive our sins. We confess the power that is in Jesus, that his blood that was shed on that cross to justify our forgiveness, to justify the life that we can only find in Jesus. That's why this morning we confess to you and we ask you that you may remove from our hearts every concern, every infirmity, every doubt, and that you may place faith into every heart here present and so that this service may serve as an awakening, so that this serve may s service may serve us, uh, allow us to hear a call from the Lord. It's the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated.
Amen. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord for the fellowship that's been renewed. We are here this morning and for having the means to hear the voice of the Lord. Lord, I thank you because of the fellowship that we've been able to achieve, Lord, for everything that I've done for your church. Because once again, another morning, we wake up and praise you, Lord. We glorify uh, for you without our heart. In the name of Jesus, amen. to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The children also have a song. Very strong, right? Glorifying the Lord. If the church wants uh, to help out,
Maranatha. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Now, Chad, may stand up and thank the Lord because His name, Maranatha, is not a denomination, uh, is not an, uh, the name of a human institution. No. Maranatha means the Lord is coming. That's our message. This is what we're waiting for, Maranatha, is the arrival of the Lord Jesus. And when it happens, everything that we went through here, the pain, the infirmity, the trials, everything is passes. And we'll be forever with our God. Lord, bless this church, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done for our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Other song. Oh, no. It's in my milk to be alone.
and my uh, prayer for God. We praise the Lord because it is unconditional. This love, because we don't have anything to offer you, but you have. You are the one who has sustained us. You are the one who has guided us. You are the one God that who has given your hand to us every day. We have not allowed any to be anything to be lacking on us, Lord. We praise you, Lord, because we are more than victorious in your presence. Lord, without you, we are nothing, Lord. With you, we can do all things, Lord. We praise the Lord because one day you found us. You brought us to your house, Lord, into your presence. And you taught us how to walk, Lord, every day. Uh, on following your steps, Lord, and showing how good and sweet to be in your presence. Lord, we glorify your name because you love us, Lord, inc unconditionally. Because your love touches us. Your love make us feel great in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. And we know that you have uh, a, lo a lot more to give us and to do for us. You have taught us to wait, Lord, to be with you in your eternity, Lord. We glorify you for everything in the name of Jesus. Another song.
Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I invite the brethren once again to stand up. And we are going to open our Bibles and the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah 38 verses 1 and 2. Amen. Isaiah. The text here is also in the projection. And the word of the Lord says the following. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, and said, Remember now, Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight and Hezekiah wept bitterly. Amen. The brethren may sit down. My brethren, this story from the word is a story that is pretty well known by everyone that speaks of a great king that reigned in Israel many years ago. This king was well known, noble king, a great king, because of, of the way he governed his kingdom, for by the way he served the Lord. And the text says that in a specific moment of his life, he was uh, taken by a sickness, a deathly sickness. And when he was sought after by the prophet, for sure, he was expecting to hear from the prophet. He received a visit from the prophet. And when the prophet came to the palace, for sure, he was expecting from the prophet a word of, of comfort, word of that might have brought to him a little bit of uh, comfort. But much on the contrary, what he heard from the prophet were word, uh, strong words. Look, king, set your house straight because this illness has no solution and the prophet said this and he left and that was the mission of the prophet to say what was the word of God what was the message of God independent on what uh, the seriousness and the harshness of the message from God the prophets had to proclaim because they were the mouth of God. And as the king now, when the king heard those things, what calls my attention is his reaction. The way in which he had received this, he didn't rebel against God. He was not weakened in his fellowship with God, in his faith with God. His faith was not shaken. He didn't fight with the prophet. Uh, he could have been offended with this. He was a king. The king that he was a judge, 
he, he did everything was he was the highest authority in the kingdom whatever he said had to be done even though he had all those things by his hands he received this truly as a message from the part of God and another interesting thing here regarding his reaction was because he was not he didn't go to his family members he didn't go to his wife or to the ones that were closest to him his employers his employees uh, to complain about God but the word describes that he turned his face to the wall and there he prayed to the Lord he prayed to the Lord his action to turn to the wall and pray to the Lord shows his trust in God and shows also to us his dependence in God and his humility of receiving a harsh word but to trust that the Lord was in control of everything and his prayer also was a prayer that spoke to God's heart he put into words what was his life what was he was feeling look I ask you that you remember that I always walked in truth and with a uh, a faithful heart and the prayer of the king once again shows his nobility his behavior and his intimacy with God because the words here with a few words the king was able to show to God that he was inside of God's time inside of God's project because in words even before Jesus came to this world he was showing the power the power that uh, is in the blood of Jesus he was showing the power that existed and that exists in the life in Jesus he said remember now uh, Lord I pray that I walked before you in truth. Jesus, in during his ministry here on earth, he said, I am the path, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father but through me. And that prayer of the king Zechariah, he was showing the person of Jesus. Walking in truth is when you walk with Jesus. It is when you walk in Jesus. And only Jesus can lead us to a path that can change man's destination only Jesus can take us to a path that bring us before the Father with the justification that we are children of God and that we depend on God alone that was his prayer a simple prayer and his action of turning to the wall and to say I accept it no one can do anything it has already been determined that's why it's going to happen but God my life is in your hands that's what he did it's interesting that this prayer came to the throne of God this prayer was answered immediately I think I, I never I don't remember ever seeing a prayer that was answered so quickly because before the prophet left uh, left uh, uh, the surroundings of the palace before he went through the gates of the palace the Lord spoke to him and said Isaiah I heard the prayer of my servant go back and speak to him 
and say that I'm adding 15 years more to his life because of his prayer. And the prophet did that. Immediately he came back and said those things that God had told him. Remember, I keep thinking about how it is that God acts in man's life, how much God loves man to the point of, of reaching with his hand uh, towards man and with his scepter bless men. We are flawed. We're sinners. But God only looked at the sincerity that is in our hearts. When somebody prays to the Lord with sincerity, when somebody presents to God what is the product of salvation of man in Jesus to God, at that moment, that person is able to reach God's heart. And God works in our behalf. And you will see the joy of the king. You see how he felt so blessed, so gratified. And if we open verse 17, verse 17, if you can see here in the projection, you see the expression of joy, of satisfaction that the king Hezekiah because the king Ezekiah was soon after he heard from the part of the king, the prophet, in the name of God. Verse 17 says the following. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness, but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you have cast all my sins behind you back. Look what the expression here. The words of God. He tells the, the Lord the following, Lord, I want to glorify you because in a very special way, in an individual way, you have embraced my soul and you didn't look to my sins. You didn't look to my sins. What a noble expression of a person that is thankful to God for the deliverances, for the miracles that only God can do. The Greeks, they were seeking in the beginning they were s trying to understand what is soul. How come the king here, he says, so lovingly, you embraced my soul. Now I ask you, how somebody can embrace a soul? How is that possible? How can anyone embrace somebody's soul since the soul is invisible? Nobody knows where it is. This was one of the doubts of the Greeks of the past. They are trying to understand it. They did studies and researched about it. What is man's soul? Where is souls, man's souls located? In the beginning, they thought that the soul is in the heart. The soul must be located in the heart because each time the, the heart beats, each beating of the heart is a sign of life. So the heart stops beating. There's no longer life. There's no soul. And then, but then they realize that that's that was not true. But the word tells us that this man's soul is placed in man's life. All of us are holders of this great gift that only man has. Out of all the other animals, animals that have been created by God, of all the other creatures, only man received from God the soul. And that's what causes us to be different from the remaining creatures and make us be similar to God. Because the soul that one day we receive from God and that we keep 
in our hearts and that is placed inside of us, this so one day we'll go back to God. And that's why many people today that are happy and there are people that are sad, people that are sick because they don't know the emptiness there is in inside of their souls. They don't know that only this intimacy with God, only this closeness with God that can feel this emptiness that is in man's soul. And the more you seek the Lord, the more you hear the voice of God, more complete we become. The doctors even try to help with medication, with therapies, to try and remove a little bit of distress, remove a little bit of frust frustration of man and disappointment of man and of what the medicine tries in some ways to quench this thirst, this uh, desire for God. The psalmist said, my soul thirsts for God. David said that because he wanted to be closer to God. But there is nothing in this world, there is nothing in this life that might quench this thirst and this emptiness that is in the heart of m so many people. There is nothing in this world. The only thing that can give us this assurances, this guarantee, is Jesus in man's heart. It is when man opens up for God. And when man opens up, when man tries to know God, it's when man tries to say to God, like in the same way as the king did here, he turned his face to the wall and he thought, I don't have anybody to help me. My life has come to its end. There's nothing, but I have the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. I know that God can do all things. And that's what the king did. And that's what many of us have done. And I know that this is what Renata did in this moment so difficult in her, in her life. A moment in which for sure she felt incapable of helping herself, but she ran to God's feet. She didn't uh, revolt. Her faith was not shaken. She faced this infirmity because she knew that she was not alone. She faced this infirmity with the head held high because she knew that God was in control. Their prayers were made from her, from the children, Philip, parents, the family members, we as a church. And God heard our prayers. God gave her a great deliverance. Proof of this is that she's here today with us. Proof of this is that we are here this morning rejoicing with her because in the moment of pain, we cried with her. In the moment of sadness, we were worried about her. In the moment that she was there, we were with her as brethren in Christ because we had nothing else to do. We could not do anything else other than to say, Lord, operate. Everything is your, in your hands, God. We trust in your power, and if it is your will, we ask that you may work on behalf of your servant. That was our prayer as brethren in Christ, and we are here today, and God has operated a miracle. God used men. Yes, amen. That's all right. We believe in the medicine. We believe in everything that God has given to man, this so wonderful knowledge of this wisdom of man to dedicate, to make an effort, to learn. But the dependency that she had, I am sure, although he, she trusted in the doctors and all the medication that was being done, but her 
the trust of Renata was special in the Lord God. That I can say here with absolute confidence of it, with assurance of this. And we know that the Lord gave her not only 15 years, uh, 15 more years of life. This 15 years here served for the king Hezekiah, a number, could have been 20, 30. But we know that the experience of Renata before this infirmity had already given her not only a few more years of life. The experience of Renata with the Lord before this infirmity Infirmity gave her a lot eternal life in the presence of God. And no one can take this away from Renata because her soul is already being uh, satisfied. Her soul is, feels complete because one day Renata met the Lord Jesus. One day Renata, together with Philip, that this home is home structured in the presence of God where the Lord is there and will always be with his hand laying upon them and with his scepter um, reaching out to ordain the victor victory of Renata that was the experience of this king that and today we glorify the Lord because it was also the experience of Renata and it has also been experience of many servants who are here in this place. And that it also has been experience of many servants that were around this world that we know. Because all of those who go to Jesus will find help. Because there's no one that go towards man faster than the person of the Lord Jesus. Because he is the doctor of doctors. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. He is the God of Gods. He is the love of loves. Jesus is everything that we have. He is our trust. It is and we should always remain in Jesus. And I will ask, how can a soul be embraced? The king felt, felt embraced because God looked upon him with uh, an eye gaze of mercy Renata feels embraced by the Lord and I'll ask have you received this embrace has anyone ever embraced you in the same way that only God can do for how long have you felt like nobody has embraced you like God the service is geared towards this so that you may feel this embrace, not of an institution, not, not of a name, but of a true God, a true God that knows you, that loves you, and that is willing to give you, who entered here this morning, many more years of life, many more years of victory, and the assurance that your name may be written in the book of life. This is the assurance. This is what causes us to understand what is to have your soul embraced. It is when you have this knowledge, when you recognize this, when you uh, understand that Jesus died for your life and that he took your place on the, on the cross, a place that was not his, it was our place, but for love of men. He became man. He came to the world, died for us. And on the third day, he resurrected so that you could today live this place with this embrace, with this love that we can only find in Jesus. Amen. May God, through this message and through this service, speak to our hearts in the same way that he has been speaking. And that the God may bless you greatly. Amen. Let us hear a song.
Lord to Jesus. We'll stand up. This secure shelter we can only find in Jesus. And the proof of this is the church. Because every time that we enter into trial and difficulties, we run to the Lord, and He always helps us. And our expression, the way we express, is the same way as the King expressed Himself. Because we praise the Lord because You so lovingly embraced our soul. And this expression, this praise, is the gratitude of a redeemed soul. The soul that has Jesus, the soul that knows the Savior, the soul that has the assurance that when everything in this world passes, we will remain forever in the brace, in the arms of our God. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, I want to praise you for this blessing that you have done for us. For the assurance that you have given place in our hearts for salvation, Lord. We praise the Lord because it is good, Father, to remain in your path, Lord. This wonderful path, that it is, which is the path that leads to eternity. Lord, in fact, we don't have this morning enough words to thank you, Lord, for your deeds in the midst of the church, for the miracle, Lord, that you have operated in the life of your daughter. Lord, our tears in this morning are tears of joy, of being able to contemplate your face, Lord, and to be able to tell you, Lord, how wonderful it is to serve you, Lord. Lord, we have no words to praise you enough, Lord. But we want with all our heart, we want to tell you that we love you, Lord. That we love to serve you, Lord. And that we love to be part of this wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. And that one day you have revealed to our hearts and we revealed yourself to our heart and took us away from the world out there and to place us in this wonderful uh, path and to give us victories in your presence. We can only thank you, Lord, and surrender our gratitude this morning, Lord, for everything that you have done in the midst of your church, for the life of your daughter that is here this morning, Lord. Glorify your name because we knew, Lord, that our prayers would come to before the throne of your grace because we knew that we would be here here because you were preparing this moment in our lives. That's why we surrender our gratitude to you, Lord, for everything that you have done and you are doing because you are the same God of to yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. And for all that you ought to do in our midst, in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be on the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to praise. Because we know, we don't know what is going to happen uh, tomorrow and what we're going to happen next month. But we know that we can trust in you because you are uh, on our sh unshaken rock. You are our strength. Blessed is the man who believes without sin. Blessed is the man who believes in the Lord. And we thank, we praise your name, Lord, because the one who came down to the to the tomb but cannot praise you but we who are alive we praise your name this morning because you are our victory you are our strength we praise you for everything in the name of Jesus 
Look to God. Blessed be the name of Him. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, the Lord has given uh, revelation. And the revelations are there are information from the part of the Lord. Something that we don't know. But God this morning has revealed that entered here this morning a woman and she at a certain point of her life she was serving the Lord she lost this connection with God and now today she's missing this this embrace one day she felt embrace but today she doesn't feel embraced because of this that happened for sure um, she was vexed in some way with man well but what is important is that you know one thing don't look to men look only towards God because our trust is in God and this morning God is saying he's ready to embrace you once again and if you desire open your heart up and ask God in prayer and he will answer your prayer Amen. Let us pray, finishing the service. And let us close our eyes. Lord, we this morning want to praise your name for the miraculous operation that you have done in our hearts. We want to praise you for this experience of your servant that serves as an awakening for us. It serves as uh, teaching for our lives because we're going to leave this place knowing of one thing that we depend on you and that our dependency has to be complete in you receive our service and our glorification the prayer that were made in a way of gratitude and as a recognition of your great love Take us home in peace, and so that your word may continue to speak in each heart here present. Bless each family here represented. We ask a blessing so that in the, be the beginning of this week, we ha may have victories in your presence. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to thank everyone who came, you who came to visit us, you who came to be with us here for the service. We I thank uh, on behalf of the church and we wish the peace of the Lord to each one here. If you desire prayer, we are here at your disposal. Sister Renata is going to give a, a small testimony and three minutes. Amen. Three minutes. My brethren, firstly, we only have reasons to praise the Lord because God has taken care of each detail. It was not easy, but above all, it was a victory. So I want to thank the brethren who were 
beside us in prayer and accompanying us, our co-workers, the family members, we all have reasons to praise the Lord and to thank because God is good at every moment. It doesn't matter the circumstance. We can believe that God is the best for us. And the vic victory is not only mine, it's the victory is of the church, is of the family, of the friends. I only have to thank the Lord in first place and all the brethren. Amen. And to say glory to God. We want to thank for everything that has passed and of what is up to, up to come. Amen.